Hiya! Welcome to Geeky Girls Knit and Cross Stitch. I'm Cece, also known as Draw the Pearl, and today is the 18th of May, 2020, and this is St Stitch With Me, episode 6. There's a calendar over there, that's what I'm looking for. I'd like to say a big welcome back. Love you guys. To all of our returning viewers, and a big hiya to any new viewers. Thanks for giving us a shot. Hope you enjoy the show. So, um, if you're new here, um, my daughter, Dami, who is in college now that she's home because of pandemic, um, so she's still in college, but she's doing college from home, she and I started a knitting podcast almost eight years ago. And then last autumn, when I um, came back to cross-stitching, and she started cross-stitching, we added a floss tube aspect to the podcast. Um, and then I did a couple of Stitch With Me's um, on times when I couldn't uh, record with her, and um, now I miss doing them. So I started doing them on Mondays, and this is number six. So what I am stitching on today comes from this Pusheen Cross Stitch Kit, and I have already completed the first two patterns. So I've done that one, and pages sticking together, that one. And I am working on this third one. Um, it's 14 count Ada that came with the kit and four colors that came with the kit. And I'm stitching on this only while I am doing um, Stitch With Me's. So, um, so yeah. Um, so what has happened this week? Um, out of anything out of the norm? No, we're still, we're still, um, in stay at home um, status here in the state of Washington. Um, and Dami is continuing with school. I think she said she has like three ish weeks left, I guess. Um, and then she's hoping to do some summer classes uh, to get her like science requirements out of the way. So, but she'll still be living at home doing those. She'd do them at a local community college. And, um, Dr. Hubs is still working from home as well, which is nice. Um, the longer we can um, avoid exposure, the uh, potential exposure, I mean, the better because of my health. Um, if you're new here, I have quite a few chronic health issues, and it wouldn't be a good thing if I got sick. So, um, you're getting quarantine hair today. Don't you love it? Um, yeah. How many weeks in? I I was trying, I can't remember when the last time I left our flat was before we got into lockdown. I, I want to say, gosh, I don't even know. I But I haven't left our flat at all um, since lockdown began. The Dr. Hubs and Dammy go and pick up grocery orders and food or whatever that we need. Um, and I stay home because it's the safest choice for me. Um, yeah, I was talking with my, I talked about this on last week's episode. I go th in between the two strands um, when I'm stitching because it helps it lay flatter. I learned that from another floss tuber. Um, but sometimes my thread doesn't want to cooperate, especially um, when it's, uh, knockoff thread and not, um, excuse me, my nose is itching, not, uh, DMC or Fancy Floss, so, um, anyway, what I, um, what I was saying was, I talked to, I was talking with my boss this morning, um, I work part-time from home, why is my nose itching? It must be something in the air. Um, I work part-time from home for a, fiber mill so we process um, wool from sheep so we from sheep we process alpaca we process llama um, we what else do we process um, sometimes Angora uh, but most of what we process is alpaca and alpaca fleece and uh, wool fiber um, and I work from home doing her admin stuff. So like I have the business phone and it's answered only during the business hours that we post. So we have, I have regular 
I work four days a week, and so I have regular two and a half hour shifts that I work those four days a week. And so people know that the phone will be answered at that time if they call, um, or if they call outside that time, I return calls then. Um, and uh, that's when I answer emails. So I deal with all the admin stuff and the social media stuff. But anyway, long story short, um, I was talking with my boss this morning because we're we're scheduled to go to a fiber festival in Idaho in July. Um, and she will have um, a booth there. And um, I was going to sell our... So Dami and I are knitwear designers, although I have not done any designing as of late. I got really burned out. Somebody emailed me or messaged me about this the other day. Uh, and I was explaining to her that I got really burnt out because in 2018... I published like maybe like I want to say maybe like 15 patterns um, plus we published um, a book um, those, some of those some of those patterns were in the book um, and then in 2019 I only released one pattern but it was an epically huge pattern and it was my first time to do a mystery uh, pattern where you get um, a clue every like two weeks or whatever and you knit that and then you get the next clue and you etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, so Dami, Dami and I have three uh, physical books of patterns like that you can buy on Amazon um, of, of knitting patterns um, if you're interested in that you can go to our website javapearldesigns.com and there's links there J-A-V-A -A, so like coffee Pearl, P-U-R-L, like the opposite of the uh, the other type of stitch in knitting, P-U-R-L. Java Pearl Designs with an S, dot com. Um, and um, there's links there. They're also available as ebooks on Ravelry. Um, but um, so I'm supposed to have my books at, the, at her booth as well, but I'm also supposed to teach a class there on continental knitting, which is just another style of knitting. Um, I'm looking at my pattern here to make sure I'm doing the right thing. Three, one, okay, yeah, because I need to go down there. Um, in July, and thus far it has not been canceled, um, but I'm having to like weigh the options or uh, well, you know, my health and make a decision. Well, I'll have to make a decision about whether to go if it happens or not. So that's something, wait, that's not right. Frogging, frogging. Um, so, I mean, I'm going to have to make a decision about whether to go or not, but I still have a little bit of time to decide. Um, but I need to give, you know, if the show is going to happen, I need to be able to give them enough of a heads up if I need to cancel my class. So um, that is something that I'll be making a decision on in the next probably couple of weeks. Um, they are, they, you know, they have said, you know, what they'll be doing to... Um, provide a safer atmosphere, you know, with social distancing and putting the booths further apart and a larger space for classes so students can be further apart. And um, I don't want to do that. I've started finishing the, this X, but I need to go all the way down here and then come back and finish the Xs um, and make a decision about whether I'm going to go or not. Um, so that is something that I'll have to be deciding on in the next few weeks. So, um, what else is going on here? It's just been pretty much the same old, same old. I did finish a um, cross stitch piece um, this week. I'll show it better in the uh, full episode later this week, but this is Olga by Plum Street Samplers, except for I didn't do the sampler part at the top of the alphabet. Uh, and I did change some of the, a couple of the colors this pink right here and this teal right here because I and I'm going to finish this 
fully finish this before um, our episode, this our full episode this week. I have a mason jar that is kind of a turquoisey color that, and it's got lights in it um, that I'm going to finish this on. I finished another piece for a friend of mine on um, the same type of jar, just a different color, and loved how it turned it out. Turned out, so that's what this is going to be. Is it's going to get finished on there. So I will show that um, this week. But since I finished a project, I started a new project. Um, and I started uh, Michelle uh, Bindi Stitchy Designs uh, Hildy's Brew. And I am in love with it. I'm working on the border right now. I just started it last night. And um, I am in love with the, the color that she chose for the border on it and once I finish it I'll be starting on her Hildy strawberry patch um, I've already done a uh, is it a what's it called a very Hildy Yule whatever he, whatever the Yule one is the Christmas one um, I've already done that that does not want to work does it um, and I have you can't see it but up here above this shelf this is where like all my knitting stuff lives um, I have three like plate chargers um, that are, um, they're not ceramic, they're a hard plastic um, that I bought from um, Michael's because that's where my cross stitch group meets when we're allowed to meet in person. Um, and so sometimes I shop. Um, so I have three chargers that I bought that I wanna finish all three of the pieces on. So when I stitch, the Hildy strawberry patch. I'm not going to make it into a strawberry like the, um, like the pattern shows. I'm going to, um, do it as a flat finish and put it on one of the chargers. So I was actually talking to Dammy uh, about this yesterday because, um, the way the pattern's written or laid out, it, um, it takes into account that you're going to make that into a strawberry shape. So I'm going to like mimic some of a couple of the flowers and vines from the top of the pattern and put them as well on the, as put them on the bottom of the pattern as well. Um, just to, um, to help take up some space that would normally have been used to make it into the strawberry. So I'm super excited to do that. I should have brought over here. I can't. It's on my desk. Let me see if I can maybe remember. So there is um, in the knitting world, there is a knitting podcast called The Knit Girls, and they have been podcasting for like, I think, like 10 years. They I think they had a couple of years under their belt when we started or around there. Some anyway, um, They've been podcasting longer than we have, and it's two best friends that do it. And they have this um, yearly challenge um, that they host. Um, one of the hosts of the podcast is a um, librarian in a middle school. And so it's a challenge they do, like, usually when she is out of school. Um, this year, of course, you know, she's out of school because schools are closed, but, um, it runs from May the 22nd to August 22nd this year. And it's, the challenge is set up for it to be, gosh, you guys, I don't know what is going on with my allergies. My nose is just itching like the Dickens. Um, it is a challenge set up for knitting, crocheting, weaving, and spinning. And it's to encourage you to finish projects. And when you finish a project, you get to count the entire amount of yarn it took you to make the project. Um, obviously spinning, it's the, it's a little different because you're making yarn. Um, not just the amount that you work on during the dates. So for example, I have a pair of socks that I'm working on right now that are all but finished. It probably will take me maybe 20 to 30 minutes to finish them. And I've put them into what I call stash dash hiatus so that when the along starts, I can finish them because I knit them for my bestie's uh, husband for his birthday that's coming up. And he's got massive feet like US 14s, I think is what he wears. And, um, so when I finish them, I won't get to, I won't 
get just to count just like the, I don't know, 10 meters or whatever of yarn, it's probably less than that, that I actually knit on during the along, I will get to count all 300 plus meters that it took me to, uh, to make the socks. So you set you set a goal for yourself. Um, you're not really you're not competing against other people. It's it's a challenge to challenge yourself. Um, and so this year I've challenged myself to do 1,500 meters of yarn. Um, but I decided that I wanted to include cross stitch challenge for myself as well. Oops, there we go. Oh no, Get a little one of the strand. There we go. One of the strands didn't pull all the way through. Um, so I think I, I talked about it in last week's episode. Um, but I, if I remember right, what I decided was I want to do at least 18,000 stitches on my Edinburgh Castle, which is a full coverage, pe the full coverage piece that I'm working on. Oh, see, I was trying to use every little bit of that floss as I could. Um, so I think it was 18,000 stitches that I want to do on Edinburgh Castle. And then I want to do, I believe I set it at 20,000 other stitches uh, beyond Edinburgh Castle. And I think I'm going to do it differently and not do the thing of you get to count all the stitches on a project. I Because like one of my, one of my goals is to complete um, my uh, my Christmas list by Silver Creek Samplers during uh, Stash Dash. Um, and that's a massive piece, and that would be more than 20,000 stitches, just that one piece. Um, I think what I'm going to do is just count the actual stitches that I do during Stash Dash. Um, so, yeah, so I'm planning to do that. Um, as a challenge to myself for the summer. Uh, and that way I'm getting some knitting in. Um, so like I have that pair of socks to finish. I have a shawl that is about 75% done that I'm planning to finish. Um, it's actually going to be a raffle item um, th for the raffles that Michelle Bindi Stitchy does uh, on, her, on her Instagram account um, for... Um, I believe we decided October uh, for for whatever I can't remember what the name of the charity we chose was, but it's um, related to uh, uh, infant loss, uh, so miscarriage and stillbirth. Um, so I'm gonna finish that shawl. Um, I have two more pairs of socks to uh, finish that I want to get finished during um, Stash Dash. One of them is a pair for a friend, and the other is a pair, and I've started those, and I'm almost to the halfway point on the first sock of that pair. And then the other pair is a pair for my bestie's oldest son, um, and I'll actually, I stitch, um, I'm sorry, I knit tube socks for him, that way he can wear them longer as he's still a growing boy. Uh, I have not started those yet, but I will be doing um, Frankenstein socks for him, uh, just like I did for his dad, and the ones that I just did for the Dr. Hubs for his birthday. Um, and then I want to go ahead and knit um, for my niece and nephews. Uh, last year I knit um, slippers for them for their birthday and they loves them um so I'm gonna knit new pairs for them because um I'm sure they've worn them down as they've worn them they've got animals as well so um I'm sure that they will be ready for new pairs so I'm gonna try to knit all three of those pairs of slippers during stash dash so there's lots of stuff that I'm planning to work on um and then uh, cross stitch wise I do want to finish of course I'll be working on Edinburgh Castle um, I want to finish like I said my Christmas list um, I want to finish Hildy's Brew and Hildy's Strawberry Patch um, Dammy is turning 21 this year and um, I sent her to a Etsy uh, shop with cross stitch patterns in it 
thinking that she would like this this particular can you hear pink pearl <laughs> Pink Pearl is our cat, if you're new here. Um, and I guess she wants somebody to play with her because she picked up her, one of her uh, toys, it's a jingle ball, in her mouth and then went crying to the Dr. Hobbs and Dammy because she wants somebody to play with her. <laughs> oh my goodness, silly baby. Um... Okay, where was it? Oh, I sent Dammy to this Etsy shop thinking she would like this one particular series of uh, cat cross-stitch patterns. And she decided that those ones were her style, but she liked um, another series that uh, this designer did. And so she told me, like, she told me her three favorite, thinking I would stitch one of them for her. I'm planning to stitch all three, and I actually just placed a fabric order yesterday. Uh, for the fabric, so I want to at least get, let's see, this ends August 22nd, and Dammy's birthday is October 13th, but I need enough time to fully finish them. So I want to fin definitely finish at least one of them and be at least probably three quarters of the way through the second one, if not completely done with it, and even potentially completely done with the third one. Uh, it just depends. Um, so that's the things that are like on my um, list to finish for Stash Dash. I've been talking a long time. I had intended to answer like several questions of my um, hashtag CC Stitch With Me prompts, which are, I'm trying to get the needle in there. This is a book that I have called it's hard to get it under the camera there. 300 writing prompts, and it's a one that I picked up from um, Barnes and Noble, and um, intending to like journal on these in my bullet journal, but um, instead I started answering them on these. Some of them, not all of them, uh, on Stitch with Me's, and um, yeah. So uh, let's see. Which one? I'm just going to answer one of them right now. Um, let's answer. What is something you would still buy if it cost twice as much as it cost today? The answer to that would be crafting supplies. Um, Okay, all done. No, I mean, <laughs> I'll talk more on that. Um, I, when I, when, so I, I'm trying to think how to answer this. Um, I have been crafting for a lot of years, a lot, a lot of years. Um, for a long time, it was cross stitch, and then I learned how to knit. And so I set cross stitch aside. Hey, look at that. I finished all of that color. So there is the outline of the cat. Um, so I, um, when I learned to knit, I put cross stitch aside um, and only did just like a couple of like little small pieces in like, a, at, when I started cross stitching again last year, um, at that point it had been about like 14 years since I had cross stitched. Um, so, uh, and then I've, of course I still, I still knit and I have knit for a lot, a lot of years. Um, but when I, when I first, when I was, when I was cross stitching originally and when I was first a knitter, um, I didn't really have like a stash of, of supplies or of yarn or, or of fabric. I'm trying to get this, uh, piece of floss. So that, there we go. There we go. Uh, I'm trying to get a piece of floss so I can stitch some more. Um, I didn't have like really a stash of supplies. I would just buy stuff as I needed it. Um, and then as I started, and then when I stopped cross stitching, I like got rid of all my supplies. Well, especially, I think... 
I think when I finally got rid of like the last of them is when we were preparing to move to Scotland and we like sold pretty much everything we owned and um, just stored a tiny bit of stuff with our families and everything else was stuff that we took with us to Scotland. Uh, I think that's when I got rid of the last of my cross stitch supplies. And um, I only took a little bit of yarn with me to Scotland. But then, of course, in our four years in Scotland, I bought a whole lot more. And then when we came back to the U.S., I did another um, downsizing of of my uh, knitting stash um, because we weren't going to ship anything back to the U.S. Everything that we brought back with us from Scotland is stuff that we checked or carried onto the plane. I'm trying to get this piece of floss so that I can weave it in. There we go. Maybe. Did I get it? Yes. Um, so, um, and then I have bought more yarn since we've been here. Um, honestly, right here, this is the bulk of my stash uh, on this shelf right here. Uh, and like everything on this side is what I knit with probably 90% of the time is this weight of yarn, which is called fingering or four ply sock weight as well. Um, and then up here on the top shelf behind like all the sheep uh, and next to the sheep is yarn that I use when I knit my weekly creamy hat. So I, um, before my health got so bad that I had to stop working, I was a hospital chaplain and my primary unit was the neonatal intensive care unit. And when I couldn't do that anymore. I wanted a way that, that I could still support those families. So I do that by knitting creamy hat every week <laughs> and uh, donating it. I've made hundreds of them. Um, so my stash has grown a little bit, some since we got back. And then I started cross stitching again. And so uh, of course, my stash has now started to grow with that because I had to buy, you know, I'm having to buy flosses because I don't have. Um, my supplies from the original time that I uh, cross-stitched um, and I bought lots of patterns and fabric and I'm in a fabric of the month club and um, I love it I love it but I need to remind myself I have to remind myself not to go overboard because there there's gonna be stuff that I you know I can always buy more patterns um, I can always buy more floss and fabric and yarn and everything so I try to I'm trying to remind myself not to go overboard but I'm also trying to remind myself to support um, small businesses as I have the means and ability um, because so many of my friends um, that own small businesses are really struggling because of what's going on with the pandemic. So, but back to the question, what I would buy, even if it doubled in price would be craft supplies because um, crafting has really um, helped my mental health, uh, especially through the years that I went through um, where I was, which is, it's kind of funny to say this now, where in the state we're in, where we're all, or many of us are um, staying home all the time. Um, I mean, there's essential workers, and I'm so grateful for them and for the work they do. And of course, people are having to get out and get supplies and food and such. But um, for a lot and not for a lot of time, I was pretty much homebound because I was in a wheelchair and I couldn't go out unless uh, the Dr. Hubs was able to go with me and because I needed his physical help with the wheelchair. Um, so, um, so crafting is what helped my sanity um, and also helped me build a community um, because we started podcasting during that time when I was pretty much homebound all the time and it became my community and, um, and yeah, it was, so I'm so grateful for crafting. And so I would continue to, and I will continue to buy crafting supplies for as long as I am physically able to craft, um, which is hopefully many, many, many more years from now. So, um, okay, well, I'm going to stop here. Uh, if you want to answer this question or any of the questions I've asked 
answered in um, previous Stitch With Me's. Again, the hashtag is CC Stitch With Me Prompts. And um, I would love to hear your answers to questions. So uh, I want to say thank you to those of you who reached out to me after last week's Stitch With Me. I know I, um, d I talked about some very um, heavy issues, and um, I just appreciate those of you who uh, reached out to me with kind words and support. Um, it means a lot, and I'm just really grateful for the community that I have in both the knitting and the cross-stitch world. So, um, well, you can find us online at geekygirlsknit.com. Uh, there you will find links to everywhere else we are online, YouTube, iTunes, uh, Ravelry, Instagram, Twitter, etc. And we will be back with you on uh well, we'll record the new episode on Thursday and then release it on Friday, um, a regular episode with um, knitting and cross-stitch content, as well as all kinds of other things. So until then, I hope you have a great week ahead. Happy crafting, and I will talk to you again next time. Bye.